Hello. Good evening. Hello. Good evening, everybody. Hoi you, hoi you. Wow, music stopped. I'm sorry to say that Groupon is not as sexy as Facebook. We, we had queues of people down, down like quite far for Facebook, but maybe it's something to do with social media week. And, and dare I say it, good PR. So, um, let's start today. There is a hashtag for today, and I've set up a Twitter form, which I, I'm a bit nervous about pulling up. Jay Oatway's here, oh my god. Jay Oatway's here. As is Kay. So we've got, if you're very shy and don't want to ask questions, you can do it on Twitter. I don't guarantee you'll get answered, because there's lots that come in. We've got questions from uh, Cora, from Facebook, all, all happening. So let, let's get started. Who's new to Web Wednesday? Oh, there you go. That's good. Always amazing. It's always a churn of new people. Who, who came here because of Twitter? Who came here because you're a budding entrepreneur and you want to sell your business in the next nine months? Two of you. Honest. Excellent. Who's here because you're very rich and you want to buy a business in the next nine months? One of you, right in the back. <laughs> Go and talk to her. Excellent. So, I just want to tell you about some upcoming events. Well, thank our sponsors. I've got to do it. Asia Digital Marketing Association. Okay, put your hand up. The girl in the brightest shirt in the whole place, the thought leaders in digital marketing, join the Asia Digital Marketing Association. There you go, okay. Um, also, Rackspace. Is anybody here from Rackspace? You are! Woohoo! Rackspace, who sponsors this event, they're about, they're going to have something really sexy to offer you all very soon, but not today. Epsilon, Beansbox, and Adobe. Kendrick, are you here? Who uses Adobe products? I expect all of you to put your hands up. Adobe's got an event coming up on the 9th of March, and it's in Clifton's. And if you're a designer, it's all about, it's called Refresh. It's all about Adobe Max and basically how to publish content across multiple platforms. So go and check out my website, webwednesday.asia, and there's a whole bunch of stuff there to point you in the right direction. All right, nice one. So we've got some prizes. They don't look very sexy. These are envelopes, but they contain some rather interesting items. Uh, the fourth prize is from Adobe. It's worth 4,000 Hong Kong dollars, and it's software, and it's, it's licensed. You can sell it on Groupon later. <laughs> There's uh, the third prize. There we go is lunch. Not with this lovely young lady, unfortunately. It's with this lovely young man. So, uh, Danny's going to have lunch with you at the Four Seasons. And he's booked a room, just in case he gets lucky. Oh, wait, sorry, sorry. The second prize is art jamming. Who's done art jamming before? I have. It's fucking cool. Great stuff. So if you've got more than nine friends, which everybody on Facebook does, you can invite all of you to an art jamming session, thanks to Groupon. And the first prize is seven days of Groupon coupons. Now, I don't know how you're going to spend seven days using their coupons, but you've got seven days of free Groupon coupons. And if you blog about it, there's a crutch, you get three more days of Groupon coupons. So that's the deal, right? Yes, that's correct. Excellent. So let's go into Danny. Danny is the CEO and founder of Groupon Hong Kong, formerly known as... You, you Buy I Buy. You Buy I Buy. We're going to show you a video in a moment, not straight away. But um, I've got some statistics here that I'm going to pull out so Danny can't play with them. Apparently, since June, they've got... They've sold 420,000 vouchers. Is that right? 480,000. Okay, your press release is out of date. Correct. Talk to your PR firm. That's you. <laughs> <laughs> He's saved Hong Kong people 72 million Hong Kong dollars. What's the latest figure? Uh, 86 million. 86 million dollars has been saved. Nice one. Okay, so we'll get to some numbers later. Where are you from originally? 
Uh, I was originally from Guangdong. I moved to the U.S. when I was five. Uh, then I came back to Hong Kong last uh, March. Uh, I originally came upon this group on idea last uh, February. I knew it was a matter of timing before um, someone else did it. So anyway, I basically moved here uh, March 1st, so within, within 30 days. So but I, what amazes me is you got here on March the 1st. Mm -hmm. You launched your business in June. Correct, June 28th. And you sold it in December. Correct. No, what? It was a majority investment. It was a majority investment. Yeah, I did some, sold it. Yeah. Huh? Sold it. Did you expect it to happen so quickly? I mean, a lot of times, I think, in, especially in business, I mean, you, you hope for the best. I mean, going into this business model, that was what we were actually planning for to happen. And, you know, with this case, it actually did happen. So, I mean, but definitely it was a best of a best case of scenario. But uh, normally, you know, this stuff doesn't happen. So, are you, are you an opportunist? Um, perhaps, yes, I mean, perhaps. definitely, I'm, I'm an optimist, I would say. So we're gonna, I, what I think is really interesting about your business is the social media angle of it. And we're not going to talk about social media today because it's talked about too much. But your database is how big? I understand, how many people do you have on your email? Uh, 430,000. Correct. And your Facebook page? Uh, 250,000. Okay, so let, let's show... Who, who has seen the, um, the famous you buy, I buy sets of videos on the web? You're obviously not the right target audience. Who likes Vanessa Wu? You're obviously not the right target audience. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to show a little video uh, just to see what you missed out on. There we go. It's a little bit long, but it's worth it. This is something that we did actually before we even launched the website, so to create awareness and uh, you know hype about the website. You can see it on the screens there too, if you want. You know, you know, this is just still tonight. Yubi! Hey, Yubi! 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 Who's this guy? MC Jin, right? Broken heart left on the floor. Then he hears a knock at the door. An angel arrived, then what did he say? Fear not, my friend, I shall show you the way. I'm here to fix pathetic lives, and your life is pathetic. It's time for your wake up call. You buy, I buy. Dot com. You buy, I buy. Say it again. You buy, I buy. The more feeling. You buy, I buy. Say it like you mean it. You buy, I buy. Yeah. Look. Lucky for you, I bring my lucky guitar everywhere for emergencies such as this. Got a song for you. Go something like this. If you used you buy, I buy, then you needn't sit and cry. Women like to dine and wine. Diamonds in the rough are hard to find. I loosen up, first of all. You know what I mean? You know what? I don't think we'll show the whole thing as you can hey, see it on the web. This awesome, amazing, Who wants to watch the rest of it? Log right. on to the internet. That's enough. You can watch the rest of the web.
It gives you an idea. What's interesting here, though, is that he used celebrities. So why, why did you use celebrities, and why did you choose to, to use a viral video to get your business off the ground? I mean, because we knew it was going to be a new business model, and we needed something to actually trigger a, a lot of uh, noise and credibility-wise. And that's one of the main reasons, actually, we used uh, Vanessa Wu and MC Jin, because basically we launched it simultaneously in Taiwan and Hong Kong. It was a new company, so I mean, we were, I mean, nobody would have known about us because we didn't have no type of backing or no type of company backing. All the funding was private investors wise. Uh, so we needed to draw attention somewhere. And basically, this, in, in terms of in Asia wise, I mean, the best form, of way, in my personal opinion, was to basically, you know, get celebrities on board, um, create something that actually people will actually want to talk about or want to actually, because we released a video approximately a month before it actually, we actually launched the site. Um, with that, you know, when we launched our site, we already had 25,000 Facebook fans. And being able to use... So you use the video, followed by Facebook, followed by the website. Correct. Right? And, and just, I mean, realistically, I'm not, I'm not sure how many people are familiar with Facebook cost per click advertising, but being able to use Vanessa Wu's picture, I mean, we had cost per click, when was that? Eight cents. I mean, that's really, really low in, in this industry, right? I mean, eight cents for Taiwan. So how much do you pay Vanessa Wu to do this video? <laughs> Well, I mean, he's actually a friend. He's so actually, you paid him in share. <laughs> he, he's actually, active for you, man. Correct. He, he's, he's actually a, a friend, and he actually wanted to be a part of this project because he actually saw, you know, basically there was a really big opportunity here to, you know, do something big. And so he, you know, jumped on board uh, right away once we approached him with the uh, uh, idea. So for, for the entrepreneurs in this room who put their hands up, give us an idea how much it costs to get your business off the ground. This, this specific business. Yeah. I mean, this, this was my dirt business, so I mean, basically this was my dirt business. One thing I knew going into this business model is basically I didn't want to get into the position where we would run out of cash. So I, I wanted to come in there with adequate funding before I even launched, we, before we and my two partners actually launched this website. So uh, I, can't, I can't give you the specific numbers, but we had adequate funding wise between me and our two partners in terms of we would last one year with basically we're, we're you know, forecasting cash flow. Um, things like that, and the headcount, of course, that we actually forecasted, okay, if we did not make a single penny, we would last for one year with 20 employees, um, and going through everything else, basically, because I didn't want to get into a position where, you know, someone comes us, comes to us at a point where we're dying for cash, and we have to give, give it up to them at a very low valuation, so we always had that in mind in the beginning. So what, I mean, you're from America, right? Well, Guang, Guangdong, Guang, uh, Guang American, right? Yes, uh, Bay Area, correct. Bay. So why would you come to Hong Kong? Most people in, in the e-commerce world always avoid Hong Kong, right? Why, why, why would you come well, I, and be I, rebellious in Hong Kong? I studied the business model very in depth. I mean, there was no way I had enough money to compete with Groupon and Living Social in the U.S., right? I mean, I love the business idea of it. I, I went through Groupon, I went through Living Social, I played with how their platforms work. I even, even signed on as a merchant, went through the whole process with both these platforms to better educate myself in terms of basically making sure this actually model works. Once I fell in love with the business model, I was like, okay, originally we wanted to go into China, but I knew at that time, once last February, China would have been, I mean, China's, doing business in China is really different because I, I've done business in China as well, doing uh, hotel furniture, but I knew if we go into China, we would have been basically, you know, within this very soon, I mean, I didn't have 10, 20 million dollars US to play with, right? And then we need it, we really, if you wanted to go in China, you really need that much money. Um, so the next best thing, because it's Hong Kong, because basically Hong Kong's still the financial hub of Asia. I felt that if we were to do well in Hong Kong, somebody, perhaps like Groupon, of course, what, what, that was what we were thinking, would have been you know, the perfect target for someone wanting to get into China. They would not want to come into China directly, but what, through Hong Kong, they would want to go into China. So, so, okay, so you came to Hong Kong, you made a wicked video with some celebrities. Correct. You use Facebook, mm -hmm. and then do you think you successfully, I'll try, try and say that again, successfully taught people in Hong Kong how to use e-commerce? Do you think Groupon, the Groupon concept is what is going to change Hong Kong people's well, mindset to online buying? That was one of the major objectives and risks coming into Hong Kong, because everyone was saying, hey, you know, I don't think it's going to work. I'm like, why? Because like, you know, everyone says Hong Kong's so convenient. Why people just go down the street and they buy something and they, you know, they, don't, they don't really shop online. Hong Kong, comparatively to other Asian countries, let's say Japan or South Korea, uh, Japan and Korea, they have 90% e-commerce shopping rates. Compared to Hong Kong, it's about 50% uh, 
Um, so it's very low because just how convenient Hong Kong is. I mean, that was one of the major risks. But then I felt that if we actually were able to give out a good product and give you know consumers credibility, that people will actually want to shop online. Uh, you know, when, and within this past you know eight to nine months, people have been telling me actually um, that you know they felt more comfortable shopping online and due to that the experiences with us that they've been actually wanting to shop online more, look for better uh, deals actually um, online. Do you think there's enough room in Hong Kong for multiple players? Because um, since you guys have started making noise, mm -hmm. you know, there's many players out there, the clones of clones, right? Yes, I mean, in every market where Groupon is operating, there's tons of clones. There's at least, you know, I mean, in, in the U.S., for example, there's, you know, hundreds of clones, but I mean, Groupon Living Shelter command 90% of the market share right now. Uh, you see that in every other market as well, in which basically one or two players, two players at most, will command 80 to 90% of the market share. I think you'll see that in Hong Kong as well. Uh, we already see in Hong Kong that, you know, there's 30 or 40 competitors, but a lot of them are slowly dropping off because a lot of the small competitors, um, it's hard to sustain this type of business in the long run due um, to the lack of funding and resources. So if I'm Vala, I'm the owner of Vala, mm -hmm. you come to me, how do you sell Groupon to me? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a club for, Correct. you know, I well, like I mean, beautiful I mean, people in my club. <laughs> The, how, how, how would you, am I the right target for you? Who's, who's the perfect, you know, business partner? Forget about consumers, but the business sure. partner. I mean, a business partner is, is really any merchant or business that actually wants to promote themselves via the internet. I mean, because this model is really effective. I mean, because for any brand or merchant-wise, there's no risk to it, really. Because basically, you're a marketer, you're a brand. Uh, let's say if you do like a tram ad or like TV ad or a radio ad or anything like that, magazine ad, you have to have an upfront cost. The upfront cost, but you're not able to measure that in terms of uh, your ROI, correct? So if you do it via us, basically we actually promote you guys. I mean, doing a feature with us basically exposes your brand to 2 million people in 24 hours to potentially... So you've got 2 million people on your database well, now? No. If you combine it, we have 430, 20,000 subscribers. Yeah. Uh, we also have you know, 250,000 Facebook fans, and we also have exclusive partnerships with MSN. Um, Cena and you want to discuss where they actually distribute our daily deals via their database. So, oh, so you're combining all of them together correct, makes correct. 2 million people. Yes, uh, plus 2 million people. I mean, and, and we only make money once we actually bring a new customer um, to, let's say, Volar or a restaurant or a spa or, you know, TurboJet or anything like that. So, I mean, it's a backwards model of advertising and we only make money if you guys win. So it creates like a win-win situation for the merchant, um, the consumer and the company. Okay, so if, I, if it costs $100 to come in here, Correct. How, tell me the business model, because I, I, don't, I don't quite understand well, that, right? So you come to me and say, right, I'm going to get you 2,000 people to attend the next Web Wednesday. Correct. I go, fuck, yeah. And then you say, right, so what's the deal? Well, I give you 80, you sell it for 100. Well, how, I give no, you 60. No, I mean, our, I mean, our discounts start at 50%. Um, so minimum, we start with 50% off something uh, fun to do in this. We like to, you know, basically say these these people that actually come to our site, they're not uh, cheap people, but they actually want to try and experience new things. Because a lot of times uh, we research and basically do our CRM program that 25, 30 percent of the people that actually buy the first time, they actually come back. I mean, that's value. So you're saying 25 percent of how many people buy the first time? It, it depends on the deal itself. But let's say we sell a thousand vouchers. Um, you know, 25 to 30 percent of those thousand, 250, 300 people will come back to the same merchant or the same restaurant. Uh, I'm mean, realistically, I tell everyone, this is not a sales platform, but it's definitely a marketing platform. Basically, the marketers and the brands are not giving the money to the advertising company or you know the the tram or the newspaper, but they're giving the actual um, company uh, the money to the customers for them to try the brand. And then if the customers like it, they will come back at their convenience. So it's all about trialing. It's yes. all about that the main point is sampling, trialing, right? right? Exactly. Because there's so much to try everywhere. So give me an example of a successful, you know, for the guys who don't know your right. client base, who, who's the most successful? Merchant? Yeah. Is it, is uh, it a hamburger joint? Is it, right. uh, is it a nightclub? Is it a lounge? I, I, I think we had two very successful deals, which actually was even beyond my expectations. Uh, we worked with Triple O's here in Hong Kong. I mean, within three days, we sold seven. What did Triple O's do? Was it twenty-five dollars uh, for fifty dollars worth of uh, food and drinks? Hamburgers. Hamburgers, correct. Who, who likes Triple O's? Mm. Who's used a Groupon coupon of Triple O's? Yeah. There you go, man. You got three buyers. Uh, you know, one of them works for you. Correct. <laughs> correct. But within three days, I mean, we sold seventy thousand vouchers. 
uh, for hamburgers. I mean, that actually broke all of Group One worldwide records and basically within the F and B industry of number of vouchers sold for a restaurant. But I, I met a guy who, who bought ten. Huh? I bought. I met a guy who bought ten. Oh yes, definitely. He, he bought ten, but right. he told me he can't find a way to use them all. So. It's, <laughs> Do you think there'll be a secondary market in reselling coupons that you bought off, off Groupon? Can I, send, can I send up regroupon.hk? No. If you, if you look at the US market, I mean, there's a, right now there's a secondary market for people actually selling coupons that actually they bought off Groupon. Um, so there is a secondary market created. I mean, just like Facebook has created so many new companies, I think Groupon it will actually be able to create additional companies. Um, due to the business model. That's a, that's a good point. When we had we had the Facebook guy here, he said that you know Zuckerberg's main goal was to create an environment where other businesses could launch. Correct. Explain to me. Expand upon that with Groupon. I, I, how do you how are you going to help other businesses kind of grow their business off the back of yours, apart from your direct clients? How do you think there'll be? Is it like eBay where there'll be businesses showing people how to get on Groupon, how to set up on Groupon, how to market, how to package? Well, what's, what's the offer? Well, I think because Groupon has been so successful around the world, every single market that's launched has been the market leader. Um, and there's tons of businesses right now, which I mentioned earlier, there's sec a secondary market which is launched in Europe and the US, which people basically buy unused Groupons. Um, there's also other versions of group buying which basically specifically niche. Uh, you know, last week in, in California, they launched you know, group buying for marijuana. Uh, so group buying for marijuana? In California, correct. There's one site that launched it. Um, so there's group buying. What's it called? I, f I forget the name. <laughs> Does anybody know what it's called? Kush on. Group grass? Kush on. Kush on. Do, do they deliver? <laughs> <laughs> one guy in the back, yeah. Interesting. So, so yeah, sorry, carry yeah, on. But I mean, there's group buying for every type of image. There's group buying specifically um, you know, for baby products, group buying for you know, lawyers, I mean, group buying for cleaning. I mean, there's so many different niches. Uh, which is actually you've seen group buying it. Okay, so have you have you found anybody in Hong Kong who's said, right, I can help you get on Groupon? Is anybody out there being entrepreneurial enough and, and running a business off the back of yours? Yes. Don't understand. What What do you mean? Are there people out there who are saying, hey, I'll be your agent. I'll I'll go to Groupon. I'll get you a good deal. So other middlemen who are coming up and oh, saying, oh, like freelancers. Yeah. Yes, I mean there are freelancers which basically will you know come up to me or come up to our company as basically you know they have merchant relationships or something like that. And they believe our platform can actually help. But the main thing is they actually do believe our platform can help the merchant. Of course, you know then of course we work with them and, and we work out a uh, you know scheme in which they also get something in return. So is, is your is your company basically a sales machine? I mean if. If I walk into your into your office, mm -hmm. is it banks and banks of salespeople who are just on the on the phone going, buy buy buy? Is it is it really you know is it a sales machine or how would you describe your organization from a manager of a, of a business? Well, I mean right now, I mean just to give you an idea. I mean right now we have thirty five people in our office. Uh, one third of that is uh, you know business development managers. So one third of that is basically going out to the merchants, talking to merchants, educating. It's really about educating the merchants. Um, to let them know if this is actually a really effective marketing platform. Um, and basically, I mean, the product sells itself. And of course, as a merchant or, or a brand, the reason why only one or two players can be able to succeed in this type of market is because if you're a brand and merchant, you only want to work with the best. And then you have the brand image to keep as a merchant or a brand. And we do have the biggest database here currently in Hong Kong. So it does, you know, that's why it would make it easy for a brand to choose us. You didn't really answer my question, but that's all right. <laughs> So I've got some technical questions here. Who, who in here is a developer or a programmer? So not many of you, but it's, it's interesting. Did you build, um, how did you build the whole you buy, I buy system? Was it in-house? Did you, did you shop around and, and crowdsource it? Because you, know, you obviously didn't pilfer it off Groupon. No, no. no. So how did, you, how did you set up the whole technology side of your business? It was outsourced. Uh, originally, I mean, you know, we went with India. Which was not a good choice. <laughs> Why not? I have lots of Indian friends. Don't be such a racist. <laughs> well, a personal experience. It, 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 it didn't work for me uh, or us, basically. And it was just a lot of communication gaps. And you know, there's a lot of things that we actually... We originally wanted to launch in May. Because we knew we wanted to really want, launch it. And then we actually came to Hong Kong and we actually went with the outsourced provider. Which is, is so much easier working with someone in-house. Rather than someone 
you know, which you can only can communicate via email, such as you just need someone to understand you and sit down and say, hey, this is what I really want in the website, this is the functions I want in the website, and such like that. So you basically, you tried in India, it was yeah. cheap and it was shoddy, right. so you, you pulled yeah. back into Hong Kong, right? Exactly. We went with you know, your story has been repeated many times over the years in the internet in Hong Kong, so actually I support what you're saying. Mm -hmm. um, let me see, and I'm taking some questions here. Yeah, here. Nick, Nick Reed, are you here? And do you want to ask the question that you put on, on uh, Cora? Come on, come here. He's got quite a funny question, so you can ask you this one. Just in case you forgot it. I just said uh, 1997 called and won their printable uh, vouchers back. Where's the, uh, where's the iPhone app we can show to someone to get the, uh, get the item? Uh, it's currently in development right now. Uh, we hope to be launching it in mid-April right now. So it is in development. So basically it will be paper free. So how are you, okay, so it's all about location based, right? The Facebook guy was here saying, oh, we're just about to launch Facebook places. Right. And off the back of that, you get Facebook deals. Mm -hmm. Google, who seems to kind of launch into all these things offers. and not get very far, mm -hmm. Google offers, right? So are you going to get crushed by these guys? I, I think we, we operational-wise, I think, you know, we're the, we're the company that actually started this whole group buying. So I think expertise-wise, operational-wise, uh, I think we'll be able to handle the competition. I mean, I don't think we're going to be, we're, we're definitely not going to be crushed by the competition. So are you going to work with Facebook? Can I, can I use Facebook to sign into your system? Yes, right now, Facebook Connect. Okay, mm -hmm. so how are you going to, like, the next step, right? So I use, your, I use Groupon a lot. Mm -hmm. Are you going to personalize it for me? I'm, I'm going to be able to come back and, and you'll know that I, ha I have two children and I only buy things for kids? Well, we are working on a personalization, and, and which is deal personalization, which the U.S. has already started. And basically, we'll be able to customize specific deals to your needs um, because basically not, not everyone wants a spa deal, not everyone wants a restaurant deal. So you guys will be able to select uh, what deals exactly you want coming into your inbox so you guys don't treat it as spam. Hey guys. Hey, you lot at the back, you're always so loud. God. So rude. Don't worry, you won't give them any coupons, ever. <laughs> what, what are your names? Please leave them at the door. So culturally, right, well, you're, you're now dealing with Groupon. Tell us the experience of a local company. Mm -hmm. what, what, what is the benefit to you, apart from loads of dosh? <laughs> what is the benefit of being part of the larger Groupon family? What, what, what are you encountering is, is, you know, because you had a business here that was working, right? Correct. I'm, so I'm, apart from having a massive bank account, what, what is the benefit of working with Groupon? Well, I mean, you know, they, they build tons of resources. I mean, there's so many operational uh, items that they bring to the table. I mean, they basically started this business and within two years, they grew it to basically the fastest growing company in the world. There's a lot of internal um, resources and documents that actually they publish to us and we actually work very closely um, with the other Groupon countries in which basically allow us to share resources and share best practices I don't think any of the competitors will be able to uh, have access to. So is it, is, I mean... When they came on board, did you trash all of your technology and use the Groupon platform? Because it said powered by Groupon on your website. Does that mean that you just ditched it and said... No, no, no I mean, we're, we're going to be fully migrated over to the Groupon platform within the next month. Um, so that is the plan, uh, but not currently yet. Because um, right now we're migrating all of our users, um, so, which is why a lot of people ask me, uh, we, right now we have UBuy Buy and Groupon.hk running parallel. So uh, within the next month, it's just going to be uh, Groupon.hk. Are you sad to say goodbye to you by I buy? No, I'm, I'm very happy to be part of Groupon Hong Kong. Is I think it's much more sexy, <laughs> right? So, so tell us culturally, right? I mean, I'm very curious to see culturally the difference in terms of how people buy on Groupon here as opposed to say New York. Is is there a difference, or are we all the same? Demographics-wise, it's pretty much the same in terms of the people that actually buy. Uh, if we look at the numbers from you know Groupon around the world, I mean globally, the majority of the people that buy are females, it's above 65%. Um, but the types of things that may work in the US perhaps, you know, we tried uh, rock climbing. Uh, rock climbing didn't do too well here in Hong Kong. I think, you know, we sold 27, which was our uh, least number of vouchers so ever. Uh, but so in Hong Kong it's food. Is it food which sells? It seems to be food. Yes, right? F&B and also, you know, travel. Like, you know, basically we, when we did Turbo Chip with Macau, I mean, we sold 16,000 vouchers in 24 hours. So 16,000 vouchers. What's that in, in financial terms? Uh, 3 million HKD. How much? 3 million. 3, 3 million. million. My God. Okay, so um, are you hiring? 
Are, are we hiring? Yeah. Yeah, every, every day we're hiring. Do you want a really cool PR, social media, internet kind of guy? <laughs> There's a few out there. Yeah. I'm does, sure. does anybody want to work for Groupon? Especially you lot at the back. Do you want to work for Groupon? Because they need some really loud salesmen. Anybody want to work for Groupon? What, what kind of people are you hiring? Uh, I'm a, we're, we're, I mean, right now we're going to be ex definitely expanding. I mean, we're hiring everything. I mean, sales, marketing, um, support, customer service, uh, finance. There you go. Good one. Mm -hmm. So I, I like go back to some demographics. Mm -hmm. Is it is it mostly women who are using Groupon? Because when I walk around my office around lunchtime, <laughs> one, one they're flicking between Facebook, Groupon, and and you know, corporate email. Correct. Yeah, the boss comes back. Yeah. Corporate email. The yeah. digital guy comes through, it's Facebook. I was at Cathay Pacific Lounge last week. They blocked our website in Cathay Pacific. <laughs> the lounge wise. They the, blocked your website? Yeah, the UBI vibe. Because people were missing their airplanes? Or, no, because no, I, I, then I asked the staff, so the staff, there's too much staff actually going on the website during lunchtime. They told me that. I was like, why you guys block the website? So I was like, very. So, so what is the demographic breakdown? I mean, in terms uh, of male, female, and age and in stuff. In Hong Kong, it's about 67% females. Um, uh, I think that's why I love office ladies. What we, what we uh, call them? They love to our website, and they basically, you know, they, they're the ones that love to find daily deals. So 67. And at what age? Is there a particular age group? Uh, 18 to 35, predominantly. 18 to 35. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay, so there's a question here that came from Twitter. Action Asia magazine. Are you guys in here? Action Asia? I know you can't answer this, but I'm going to ask it anyway because it... His question is, why did Groupon turn down Google's billions? Now, you can say this as Danny, or you can say it as an official working for Groupon. Mm -hmm. I suggest you answer it as Danny. I mean, I, a bloke who's in the internet. For some, I mean, the company's growing at such a fast rate, uh, and right now it's just, you know, the company's just growing so fast, we're expanding to so many different countries on a, on a weekly basis, so it's just, you know, I think right now, I can't comment further on that. <laughs> so, if I'm a merchant, the last question I have before taking to the floor is what kind of data, what kind of analytics do you give me? Do I just get people flooding in my door, or will you actually provide me, will you share consumer data, will you tell me you know, 500,000 people bid, but of this age group, da da da. What kind of analytics do I get as, as, a, cons as a customer of yours? As a partner merchant with us, I mean, basically, we give you uh, the information which is allowable to us. Basically, we, we give you um, the, a unique code. Because basically, there's so much information like an like email address and such that we actually don't release um, to the merchant due to the privacy laws. Um, but we do allow you to give you, give you all the names and the code of people that actually purchase the vouchers. So you just pass it on to the... Correct. To we pass it on to the merchants. Cool. I mean, we nice. don't release no phone numbers, we don't release no email addresses, because then it would be a you know, privacy issue. So one other question, because I'm curious about the linguistic side, mm -hmm. is does your English website basically do nothing and all the actions on the Chinese one? Or is the English one kind of, you know, competing a little bit? Is it all Chinese? You mean in terms of... I mean, 80 in terms of traffic and, and the traffic, purchases? It's about 80%. Um, Chinese, then we have you know 20%, which is English. Good reflection. All right, I'm going to take some floor, some questions from the floor. Who's got a question? I'm going to go right to the back. Who's got a question? Any questions? Jay, have you got a question? No. Anybody got a question? No. No questions. You're all so shy. No journalists in here today. Ah, one question. Have we got one question? Tell us who you are. I'm Harry uh, from ICANN, and I would like Hi, to ask a question about um, what is your next step after um, developing the Hong Kong market? I mean, right now we're focused on the Hong Kong market. Uh, He's I mean, not a journalist. Huh? He's not a journalist. <laughs> right, right now we're really focused on the Hong Kong market and just grow on this market because right now, uh, you know, there's 4 million internet users in Hong Kong. We only reach 10% of that population, so there's still a long ways for us to, to go. All right, the next question is from one of your target audiences, an OL. OL, oh, well, what's your question? Um, I, I saw your video, your interview on Bloomberg, so I realized that you did have two businesses before this. Mm -hmm. um, maybe you can share a bit about that, those, two ex those experiences and what you've learned and brought it over to Groupon. Um, 
I mean, both of my past business were very different. I mean, uh, when I was 25 started, um, I'm not sure if you guys know Hoi Lao San. I franchised that into the U.S. Danny, can you speak a bit louder? You can't hear in the back. Yeah, so sorry. When I was 25, I started my first business. I franchised um, Hoi Lao San into the U.S. as a dessert chain here in Hong Kong. I found it very... Because uh, in the U.S. it didn't have anything like it. And then so I basically I franchised that into the U.S. Um, into the Bay Area, in which uh, three years later, then I... You know, sold that, and then I started a hotel furniture business, which basically I had to do a lot of traveling back and forth to China and the U.S. And predominantly, I was doing the Vegas hotels. Um, so the last Vegas project I worked on was a city center, um, MGM city center project. And you know, all of these experiences really taught me how to kind of start something from nothing. And basically, you know, because there's starting a business, there's so many pieces of the puzzle that you have to put together. Um, so I think those two businesses really helped me, you know, kind of educate myself. And I'm still right, learning every. Any questions? Hello, hello. Carry on, we can hear. Okay. I'm just trying to get the noisy bunch for the back. Toss. Any questions? <laughs> any questions? <laughs> All right, they've run out of questions, man. Oh no, there's one more. One more. Two more questions. Um, what proportion of coupons aren't used? What What proportion of coupons aren't used? Um, you're very. I mean, it's, you're talking about eight to ten percent of coupons aren't used. Very, very, very few, and and with us too. I mean, what we have a hundred percent customer service satisfaction program, in which basically, let's say if you forget to use your voucher or anything like that, give us a call or email us, so we refund you the money. Very nice. Okay, last question, and then we'll do the prizes. Our secondary last question. Um, your so your growth strategy in Hong Kong would it include, for instance, buying up some of the other? Um, group buying companies to, in order to get their databases or is it primarily advertising or how do you plan to grow here? Right now it's just predominantly advertising and we're focused very heavily on online marketing right now. Uh, so that's where our growth strategy is going to be because there's still a lot of people that haven't heard about our company before here in Hong Kong. All right, last question then we'll do the prize draw. Jimmy from uh, QTrack.hk. Just uh, wondering what your edge is versus against all the, uh, the clones that are sprouting up all over the place. And uh, you know, what would happen if, say, uh, well, Facebook won't do it, but say one of the Chinese social networks like Renden or Tyson decided to get in on this with their distribution channel? What's um, their Groupon strategy to combat that? I mean, right now, I think we, we are very clear in Hong Kong as the market leader in Hong Kong. So, I mean, right now, we're going to, I think. It really comes down to execution in terms of our business or any type of business is how well we execute um, the sales, the operations wise, and you know after the sales close and basically keeping our you know merchant relationships in hand. Uh, I think with there's always going to be competition in every type of industry, but it's just really how we can you know foresee what items that we actually need to build uh, in terms of our database, our website. Um, there's going to be competition in every industry, and then right now we're just you know focusing on bringing new, better deals uh, than everybody else right now. Okay, thanks Danny. That was very good. Thank you everybody. Big round of applause for Danny. Right. Thank you everyone. All right. Now the moment you've been waiting for, for those of you who like Groupon coupons, we're going to do a lucky draw here. The first one is actually for the Adobe Acrobat Pro. So is, is anybody from Adobe here? He's gone, right? Can you pretend you're from Adobe? This is worth 4,000 Hong Kong dollars, so you can sell it on Groupon tomorrow. Who's the winner? Kenny Mock. Kenny Mock, are you here? Woo! I'm going to give it to you because Adobe's not officially here. Thank you. Are you a designer? No, no. Okay, you can give it to a designer. Yeah. Alright, the, the, the third prize, the third prize, is lunch with you, right? <laughs> lunch with you. Can, let's have somebody else do it, just in case he decides to play around with it. Can you? Lunch with Danny, a tense moment. <laughs> do you need some insurance? Maggie Wong from AIA, are you here? There you go, man. She's going to sell you some insurance. There you go. Well, where's, which prize is it? Which one? There's like 10 envelopes here. Which one? There's, there's one envelope in here. Come on, come down. Come down. We'll do a little photo.
Fido, Fido. Come on, clap, clap. Wait, 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 don't go away. And two tickets to the uh, Adobe Refresh thing on 9th of March. Right. Cool. All right. The next prize. Second prize. The second prize is... I forgot now. What was the second prize? Uh, art, art Jammeration. Oh, Art Jammeration. Okay, Art Jammeration. Let's see. Have a, have a good dip in there. This is for 10 Art Jammeration tickets. 10. 10. Cool. And the winner is... Phil Ingram. Phil! <laughs> Phil Ingram, are you here? Oh, there you go. Phil Ingram. And now he, he's the kind of guy that you could art jam on his head. <laughs> Phil, come here. I have a... <laughs> You've won art jamming with ten people. Oh, fuck. <laughs> you don't want it. No, 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 no. Nice. There's you and ten people. Photo, man. Do you And Anne and Adobe, uh, two tickets to their event. You like that? Yeah. Cool. All right, the final prize is seven days of Groupon coupons. So I reckon. No. And if you blog about it, you get another three. Okay, so preferably if you're a blogger, you can get 10 days of Groupon coupons. How much is that worth, approximately? What's the average deal on Groupon? 150. $150. Alright, times 10. Alright, so let, let's have uh, a little. Where is it? Here. Dig deep. Close your eyes. Stop cheating. And the winner is. Vivian, Vivian Chen. Vivian Chen. Are you here, Vivian Chen? Go on screen. Guton Consulting. Guton. Ah, they're a luxury, luxury brand consultancy. You might do business with them. Okay. There you go. What do you get? You get 10 days of Groupon coupons. Photo, photo, photo. But you've got to blog about it. Do you blog? Do you blog? No. You don't blog. Get somebody else to blog for you. Ghost blog. All right, thank you very much, guys. This continues till about 9.30. And then um, the next event is on April the 6th. And I have a mystery guest. In other words, I don't know who it is yet, but it's April the 6th. We'll see you back here, okay? Thank you. Please stay.